this time on Stationeers. We're going to be kicking things off by trying or walking through our new power setup. Uh, we're going to be adding a station battery to our new base today. We're also going to try to set up an airlock and if there is time we may even set up a greenhouse because remember our ultimate goal is to build the world's largest tomato soup factory on the moon. Hello everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back once again to Stationeers. We are back in our little homey little base here. Um, it's been nine days since the disaster where we blew up most of the base. <laughs> Um, and the first thing that I want to do in this video today is a little base tour because things have changed around here since our last episode. So, uh, for one thing, this is our the interior of our base. We have this beautiful wall light, which is just so good at illuminating my little house here. Uh, it's, it's just a light. <laughs> I'm way too proud of it. Uh, in fact, you know, I'll leave it on for now. Uh, we also have an installed door. One of the things we might do today if we have time is get an airlock going and finally pressurize this room. Uh, but anyway, for now, there's nothing nothing going on with that. It's just a door. Uh, we also have, so obviously if you've been watching the series, this is the fifth episode. Uh, we have the auto lathe, the furnace, arc furnace, the electro printer, yep, electronics printer, the hydraulic pipe bender. Uh, this is a coal generator. Uh, now this is something that's new. I actually did a little bit of work um, offline between the last episode and this one. I added an additional solar panel and this here is a station battery. So all this is is a larger capacity battery uh, and the solar panels as well as the coal generator feed directly into the station battery through heavy gauge cable. Uh, I blew up light gauge cable, uh, so I don't even think that you can really use this battery without heavy gauge cable. Uh, it's really funny too because I'm actually working on helping to put a solar system on my house at the moment, and it's it's funny how similar it is in, in the game because, you know, in real life you have your panels, and then you have a solar charge controller and an inverter and then your battery system and your loads and that's basically what we have going on here uh, so obviously I built the station battery but if you're familiar with the game you know that a station battery requires steel and steel requires a furnace uh, also I'm carefully watching my food and water here so what I've done is I have built a very basic furnace for us over here uh, and all, literally all this is, is I have placed the furnace and I have added a vent for the gas um, from the furnace. Uh, so what we can do is pressurize it with, with uh, literally raw volatiles and ice. And you can see on this nifty little gauge here, the furnace is currently at a pressure of 6.16 megapascals and a temperature of 423 Kelvin, uh, which... I do not think that is the green range for steel, but uh, I did use it to make steel. And all you do with this basic setup is uh, you insert a ratio of two volatiles to one ice, uh, and that gives you your your correct fuel ratio to make steel. And I believe the threshold is 1,000 Kelvin and 10 megapascals. I might be wrong about that. Um, but that's how we made some basic steel. So this this setup is working nicely, <laughs> and you'll notice I put it um, I put it quite far away from the rest of my stuff because I half expected to blow this thing up uh, when I first started using it. But by adding this valve and vent setup, if this pressure were to ever get too high, all I have to do is switch this valve off, and the vent will vent. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that is what we have going on here so far. Um, in today's video, I'm still unsure of what exactly we are going to do, but I think we're going to try to get an airlock going here. Um, 
so one of the tips that I got in the previous video was that I can take ice, like I can literally just take ice um, that I find and I can drop it in here and it'll gradually pressurize. But one of the things that I'm worried about is I don't want to over pressurize this uh, and I actually want to set up like a proper ventilation system. Because if you remember, the whole goal of this series is to start a massive tomato soup factory and to just pump out tomato soup at unseen rates. Um, so I think, and you can see we can charge up our battery all day long with these solar panels. And then um, this battery stays on all the time and that floods into the area power control, which also has a battery in it, which actually I'm gonna swap that out. Um, is that full? Oh, it didn't, okay. I was like, did it fill up instantly? Um, yeah, so we basically have this to store all of our incoming power, and then the area power control is just to charge batteries now and to route power to all of our devices, uh, as well as the small battery charger. But anyway, we're going to try to build an airlock. Before I do that, I need to do some research on how to build an airlock. So I'll be right back. So obviously the first thing that we're going to need to do is finish up this entryway here, uh, which includes wiring a second door. So that's what I'm going to do first. So I believe we still have one door kit left. I think it's over here. Yes, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to stick with glass doors for the time being. Um... I'm actually gonna flip this around so that the power output is this way. Perfect, okay. <laughs> Switch to my crowbar here and see what do we need? Welding torch and one plastic sheets, okay. So uh, get the welding torch and let's get our plastic sheets from our junk cabinet that gets ever fuller. Uh, let's construct this. Not sure how you weld plastic, but whatever. Crowbar and 2x glass sheets. Okay, I actually believe I have that on hand. So, let's put these back. And we have 19 glass sheets. Nice. I think in the last episode, I'm pretty sure I made a bunch of those. Um, force open. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I just built that door. I'm not going to break it already. Um, so... All right, wire cutters and cable. So can I just, can I, oh boy. Um, let me get everything out here. Viewer tip from last time. I can splice this in here. Yeah, I like that. Actually, I didn't, need, <laughs> I don't even need to do that. Mm, yeah, in fact, I'm not going to. I can do this. So straight, and then I can turn this into a corner and do it like this. Uh, okay, it's just built it that way anyway. Um, straight cable. Now, can I route this through here? I cannot. So how do I power you? Do I have to do it from the outside? I must have to. Okay. So I now we got to re or deconstruct this. So let me. Oh boy, let me. Take this out, switch, straight, switch, cable, corner, there we go, and straight, <laughs> and now I have to deconstruct this, okay, alright, let's do this real fast. So, we need to take this apart, so, I think the hand drill is what we need, angle grinder, okay. All part of the learning process, guys. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Put our glass sheets away. Uh, and then I'm willing to bet it's probably crowbar. Yeah. Uh, no, hand drill. Okay. Hand drill. Yeah, there we go. Okay, deconstruct. Uh, we gotta put our plastic sheets... In fact, I shouldn't even put them away. I should just put them here. Uh, I'll grab these while I'm at it. Just dump them on the ground. Uh, wrench. Okay, wrench it is. We shall get our wrench. I feel like such an engineer when I play this game. And I always play it super late at night. Like, it's like 3 in the morning right now. 
and it adds to the mystique of it, you know, because I feel like I'm like in some kind of ultra focus mode. And honestly, I think that's the only way that you should play Stationers, um, is in some kind of ultra focus mode. So let's get our welding torch out here. Uh, and then this is a crowbar. I also just released my first video on the channel of uh, Space Engineers, which is a game that I play a lot in my free time. Um, and reminds me of this game. It's notably different because Space Engineers is much easier, for one thing. And it's also more ship building oriented, whereas this seems more base building oriented and like survival style, uh, which is. There's nothing, you know, it's not like good or bad, it's just different. Um, and I, I really am enjoying this game, you know, I really like, I thought at first I would find it super challenging, but I actually think that, gosh, display now, um, I'm actually really enjoying it, and thank you guys for suggesting it, because I have been playing it even when I'm not recording, which is, you know, that's a good sign. Uh, let's grab our cable coil here. We can always use more cable coil. That's good enough for now. I'm going to shut this off to save power. Even though this thing is storing a ton of power. Um, you might have seen at the beginning of the video, I tried to set up a console to read the amount of power stored on there, but I wasn't able to figure it out just yet. So if you have any tips for that in the comments, that would be excellent. Um, so let's get our door hooked up here. So, there we go. Nice. <laughs> uh, hopefully, did not. Mm, I don't think I burned anything out. Yeah, I have to. I have to start being careful now, and it might even be worth putting in. I don't know. I have to see how much power we're pulling because we might be getting to the point where we are in danger of burning these cables out soon. But that's a later problem. Uh, let's swap these out. Okay, are you discharging? No, it's still charging. Uh, well, obviously it is because it's station battery. Um, but anyway, okay, I'm getting distracted. So now we have our two doors set up. Uh, what I want to do is finish these as iron walls, not as um, not as windows. So I think that iron sheets. So I do have iron sheets. Do I not? Seriously? Man. Also, we got to organize the junk cabinet because it's just like real life. You can't find anything. Um, all right, so let's power on the auto lathe. And we need to make sheets. Iron sheets. And I have a ton of iron in here right now. So I think we need four, maybe two. Not sure. We are about to find out. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Cobbled together. Oh, this one's nice. Wait. Oh, that's... Well, I can't have that. That's just plain old ugly. Crowbar? Okay, whatever it takes. As long as it's symmetrical. Whatever it takes. Uh, angle grinder. Okay. So, let's deconstruct that. Put the angle grinder away. Grab iron window, no, iron wall. Uh, there we go, that's facing outward. Okay, how did I even do that? <laughs> that's my question. Uh, do I have to weld this? No, I just need the iron sheets. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then uh, obviously the roof. I have made a window, so I assume I need glass for that. So let me grab my glass here. That's an iron wall. Wait a minute. Oh, I thought I left them outside. Wait, this is only one glass sheet. Where are my glass sheets? Hang on a minute. I had 20. Did I leave them outside? Uh, well, we can finish this either way. Uh, there we go. Okay. You wouldn't. You can't tell it's finished, but it is. Um, and these doors are both powered, and yeah, okay. 
Well, the mystery of the glass sheets has not yet been solved, but that's fine. Uh, also, uh, oh, we have a, <laughs> there's a viewer request, actually. So I've been keeping uh, my skull in storage to remind me of what uh, dangers lie in this hostile environment. Somebody said to press and release Q with my skull in my hand. <laughs> nice. I wonder, can I, oh, I can like wind up. Oh no, now I'm gonna throw it really far into the pit of death with you. And there you shall stay, human skull. <laughs> this will be our tradition now. This is how we'll keep track of how many deaths we have in this series. I will just throw all of the pieces of my corpse into this pit, such as my jumpsuit. I might actually need the EVA suit, so I'm gonna keep that up here. You know, does this have a battery in it? Uh, it does. It only has eight percent charge, but it has a battery in it. Okay, well that'll be good for emergencies. Um, nice. Okay, cool. So I can throw my skull around like a soccer ball. I've always wanted to do that. Um, what are you flashing for? Stop complaining. <laughs> I'll charge you when I get around to it. Okay, so now we need to figure out how I'm actually going to set up the airlock portion. Okay guys, so I'm pretty sure I have configured the airlock correctly. Um, I'll do a little walkthrough of it in just a second. Um, but what we're going to need to do here now is go and get some oxite. Uh, in order to pressurize our airlock. Now, is there any in here? That's water, that's nitrice. Okay, we don't have any oxide. So, uh, okay, we'll go through all this in a second. It'll make sense in a minute. I'm pretty sure I did it correctly, actually, which I'm pretty, I am pretty proud of. Um, so, oxide. Oh, I probably should change out my suit battery. Let's check our station battery. Okay, we're fine. We got more than enough power. Um, I also added an area power control in here, specifically for the airlock. Um, none of the stuff, like this table is powered. I don't really know why, <laughs> but it had a slot for it, so I added power. Uh, and the light is powered, but those aren't mission critical. The airlock is mission critical, so I gave it its own power controller. Um, it wouldn't be so easy as having this be oxide, would it? That would be way too nice. It's nitrice. Nitrice. Can't go too far from the base. I almost got lost last time I did this. Um, ugh. It scares me even being this far away from it, because I just cannot fathom being lost. Oh, hello. There's a bunch of coal and iron in here. Ooh, a bottomless pit. <gasps> wow. <laughs> a hole in the floor of the world. Very nice. Very nice. We can always use more coal. Um, I actually ran the coal generator to charge up our station battery initially, just to get it past, like, three ticks. And... Since then, the solar panels have more than managed, but it was good to use that to kind of give us a starting um, starting charge. Uh, so let's see. It's another crater. There's nothing in there. I really don't want to go too far from home. Um, but I feel like there's oxide everywhere. That looks like oxide, but I'm not going in there. <laughs> Even though I do have a jetpack and I know I can use it, but I am just so frugal with my resources. I don't want to spend that fuel until I know how to produce more of it. Uh, also on our list for very soon is to expand the base, since right now it's kind of just an ugly hodgepodge platform. And I'm not cool with that. Aesthetics are important. Things got to look good. Uh, that's part of your duty as an engineer is to make things not just function well, but look good while they do it. At least that's my opinion. Uh, what do we have here? Ooh, okay, it's the right color. Is it oxide? It's oxide! Awesome. So we get some oxide. Whole bunch of oxide. I'm trying to get a full stack here. 
Let's get a full stack. Yay, more oxide. Perfect. Okay, awesome. So, 20 days have passed. That's insane. And the great uh, ice crusher incident was already 11 days ago. So, we've come a long way since then. Um, oh, look at the sun rising over our beautiful little base. Maybe I'll make it two-story soon. <laughs> That's optimistic. Um, okay, so I'm going to put the drill away, and I'm going to get my tablet out with the analyzer. Um, oh, wait, did I not? Network analyzer. Okay, I want to switch that. So, hang on, i got to move this. i got to switch network to Atmos analyzer. Um... Yeah, so I don't want to overpressurize. Uh, I know that Earth's atmosphere is 101 kPa. We don't need full pressure. We just need good enough pressure. So I'm going to start with this powered on, and I'm going to split one off of this. Okay. 545 pascals. Okay. Great. Um, so again, I'm I'm trying to avoid overpressurizing. So we're doing this a bit a little bit pragmatically. Um, looks like that's not going to be an issue. Oh, look at that! Ninety percent oxygen, ten percent nitrogen. That's pretty good. Um, I hope this is safe. I think it is. I'm pretty sure. It seems like we're not going to have an issue with overpressurizing here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to drop this whole stack. So I believe the threshold where you can breathe is 50, I believe. So, oh, okay, hello. Set where it's 17 and a half kilopascals. Okay, that is pretty good. That's pretty good. Did I drop all the oxide? No, I didn't. Okay. More. More. 20 kilopascals. Okay, great. So, my helmet, if I open it, I'm going to start dying, right? Maybe not. Seem to be okay. I can't really tell. The game isn't giving me any indication that I'm dying, so I'm going to take that as... Oh, okay, here's the pressure. The target is 101. Okay, so I do want to get up to 101 kPa. Okay, all right. Well, that informs things very well. But, okay, anyway, to go over the airlock. So, it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. So, we have a basically one iron frame here, and it's got a door on either side, and the power and data connection for the door must be connected to your network um, and then within the actual airlock part you need a gas sensor you need an active vent and you need a console and the console has like an airlock chip inside of it uh, and what you do is you uh, so you set up the console so that everything is wired up to it so you see the gas sensors connected to the console Active vent is connected to the console, and uh, uh, passive vents don't need power, so you can just put that there. Um, and then you connect the active vent via pipes to the passive vent, uh, and then what we have here, uh, the console, you basically will configure it, so I, actually I'll demonstrate with a data disk. So if I grab a data disk here, and I put that in here, You'll be given everything that's in your your sort of local grid, or at least the that's connected via data port. And then you want to select each of the components that you want to use. So you've got your exterior door, your interior door, your gas sensor, and your vent. Once you select all those, you remove the data disk, and then the console manages the entire system. And since we have an active vent here and a passive vent here, what happens is the active vent can move uh, air or atmosphere in and out of the airlock 
uh, and that kind of gives us control of what's going on in here. So my helmet is closed, so now if I hit cycle to exterior, it depressurizes the airlock, and then it opens the door. So what it just did is it sucked all the atmosphere out through the active vent and used the passive vent on the inside to pipe it back into the base. So now when I exit here, I'm good, I'm good to go. But when I get back in, I hit cycle to interior, and what it does is pressurizes the airlock with air from the, uh, you can see it going through there, from the base. And uh, this is going to take quite a while, so I'm actually not going to do that. Oh, wait, hang on. Okay, I might have just lost some air. Um, need to go get more oxide, but you get the idea. Uh, and this is a pretty basic system. It works pretty well. Uh, I'm quite happy with it, actually. And I forgot this data disk. Eh, whatever. Okay, I can't forget this, guys. I'm leaving it here. I'm leaving it right by the APC over here. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go get a little more oxide. Uh, our station battery is good and charged. That's awesome. Whee! Let's bounce. We got a lot to celebrate. An operational airlock is a pretty big deal. Um, so, you know, that lets us theoretically do hydroponics once we get... Um, this is oxide. Perfect. Once we can get a temperature control or air conditioner running, um, and once we can do hydroponics, I think that I'm pretty sure that takes care of all of our basic needs, um, which is pretty awesome, because <laughs> that that officially, in my mind, is the end of the kind of early game. Is there more oxide here or not? There must not be. Well, that's good enough. Where's the... Okay. The base is over here. All right. So we got a bunch more oxide. So now we can... Um, we can... Drop it in our base. And that should... Uh, that should help repressurize or pressurize it all the way. So I'm going to have to wait here. So cycle to interior. So you can see... I'll get up real close... You can see the reading on the thing as it's pressurizing. So what's happening is this active vent is pulling from the um, the interior pressure, which is pretty low, so it has to pull pretty hard, and it's pulling that pressure into this room. So actually, I could I could help that by doing this. There we go. Oh, it's, it's actually trying to pressurize all the way to a hundred and however much. So we drop some more oxide. See, we're up to 70, 88, 89. So drop this. 98. Or 99 kPa. So I think... Okay. Yeah. So now the... 99 kilopascal atmosphere we just created in here is rushing into this room. If we take out our tablet, put our drill back. My mouse is acting up today. Uh, we're only at 25.5 kPa in this room, and that's because we've just distributed all of the pressure that was in that little airlock into this entire big space. So dropping this oxide hopefully raises the pressure some more. Up at 39. Okay, let's just drop all of it. Let's just put it on the ground. Uh, watch the pressure go up. And we need a little bit of water. I think there's a water bottle in here. Um, yeah. I'm not keeping my water bottles both in the ice crusher water bottle filler because I would not want to lose both at the same time. So I'm trying to keep that as a safety. Okay, cool. So now I think, I think, uh, let's look at the, let's look at the power consumption of our system here. Um, need to switch this out. Take the handheld tablet here. Okay. So our, we are pulling 70 watts. 
yeah, okay, we're pulling, well, 120 watts for the entire system. Um, and then if, let's say I depressurize, we are pulling 170 watts, which is still not too bad. Okay, and that was, that was pretty brief. So we're not consuming a ton of power when we do that, which is good news. Uh, can I... I can't see how much is in the station battery, I think. I can just see that it's on. 377 kilowatts, 378. That must be the station battery's capacity. So we, ha we have quite a bit of power in that thing. Uh, so now I wanted to look at the air conditioner unit, so, because then we can get hydroponics going, portable air conditioner, uh, what, construct, interesting, uh, let's figure this out, so cycle to interior, so you see now it's pressurizing, and if we look, we get our tablet out, we can look at how much we're consuming. So we're consuming 170 watts for the duration of time that this thing is pressurizing, which is quite a while, um, it seems to be. So I guess we don't strictly need to do this. If I hit cancel, yeah. Okay, so the ambient pressure in here is 53 kilopascals. So we don't need to wait for it to pressurize all the way. Okay, so I was just being goofy. Um, air conditioner? What are you? Oh. Oh, it's literally this. Okay. <laughs> do I put a battery in it? Oh, I do. Okay. Set hot. Set cold. I want it, I would want it hot. Oh, it takes a battery. Okay, so we don't want that. We want a permanent air conditioning unit so let me switch to my tool belt and I think I probably can deconstruct this right oh my gosh my mouse is being really strange today I apologize hand drill and drill okay perfect so don't need this right now so I'm gonna put it here um, let's have a look I guess on the auto lathe so What's important, we do need to wait for this to depressurize because if we don't, then we're losing air to the outside and that is bad. So let's see if we can't make an air conditioner on here. Air, nope, stairs and chairs. <laughs> uh, prob probably the electronics actually. No. Um, maybe a pipe bender? I guess HVAC pipes, I don't know. Um, portable air conditioner. Don't really want that. Maybe I need a heater. Just a wall heater, I guess. Yeah, that. I think that's a good start. I mean, steel, copper, I need some iron. I think all my iron is in here. Yeah, there we go. So, let's put these in here. Did it, wait, did that say steel? No, it said iron, okay. Let's just make one wall heater. Can put this back in here for now. Okay. And we can hook this up with cable coil, which I'm pretty sure we are out of right now. So, give me the copper back so I can make more cable coil. I am the cable coil king, if you guys haven't noticed yet. I, this is literally just electrical engineer simulator, and I love it. It's so much fun for me. Uh, okay, let's make a bunch of cable coil. Um, and then we need more oxide still to fully pressurize. It's just, I need, like, kind of a lot. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's do ten. That's good for now. All right. Awesome. So, we have a wall heater, uh, which I assume we just mount to the wall. You know, I'm actually just going to put these in here for now, or put this in here. 
and put this away. And I'm going to go get a little more oxite real quick to help pressurize our chamber because that is important. We need to do that as soon as possible. Um, and then we're going to need to run the ice crusher soon, but I have a little bit of, I have plenty of ice with water. Um, that's nitrice. Jump! Hop, skip, and a jump away! Suit power is running low again. I must... Have I left something on? I must have left, like, my tablet on or something that's consuming idle power. Okay. I can still see the base, so... Not too worrying. Here's a coal deposit. That's useful. Um, okay, still see the base. A lot more coal. I mean, I guess I can pick some up. I don't I could always use coal. Coal is basically power. So. And this is iron, which I actually don't have that much of right now. So I'm going to pick some of that up too. And that looks like oxide. If I'm not mistaken, it is. Okay, is it just a single piece or is there more of you hiding around here? Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, there we go. There is more. Come on. Can't hide from me. Uh, okay, there's some more. Try to get a full stack. I don't think that'll be enough to fully pressurize us, but it'll be helpful. Okay, that's iron. Okay, whatever. That's good enough. Let's head on back. I am going to throw some coal in our generator also when we get back because uh, why not? Uh, ooh, is this oxide? Okay, I thought it was another bottomless pit. I was about to be scared. Okay, there's our full stack. We can use the planet as our guide and I almost missed the base. <laughs> Ugh. I get so nervous sometimes when I go out mining. I'm sure there's a way to set up a beacon. Um, also, I'm going to need to swap out my carbon dioxide filters soon. Um, and the other thing that I should set up is a way to get um, oxygen or fill up an air tank. Uh, so let me put this away. Pick this up and cycle. So once this is closed, I can open this, and it's fine. We don't lose any. That's not actually going out, at least as far as I know. I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, so we can put the wall heater right here. What is that? What is going on over there? Has that pipe burst? Uh, that's bad. Uh, we got to get over there right now. What happened with the furnace? What? <laughs> uh, open it, I guess? Due to the presence of liquid? Very strange. Not sure what that's about. Uh, hmm. Is, is there, like, stuff in here? No, there's not. Uh, that's, that is so interesting. Let's hang on. Let's get our tablet. No, pick up the tablet. <laughs> With the network analyzer. Uh, okay, we're not getting anything. Hmm. Well. That's not good. Not really sure what the deal is with that. Um, or how that happened. I mean, obviously from liquid in the pipe, but whatever. Uh, okay, well, we'll have to address that soon. For now, I'm going to run... Oh, okay, wait. I saw this wreckage, and I was like, no way. My stuff blew up again, but it didn't. Uh, this is old. Um, yeah, this is this is super confusing. I have no idea 
uh, what's going on there, but it seems the furnace is just venting now, which is fine. I don't need it at this moment, but that's still really odd. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run this generator. Hopefully it doesn't blow up our cables here. Just for, just for a little bit. Consume some of our coal, because we have, we have quite a bit. Um, yeah, okay, battery full, so we don't want to over overcharge it. So fill that up and put the excess coal in here. Okay, so cycle. <laughs> and we don't need to wait for the pressurization. Um, this wreckage is just garbage, so I can put that on the ground. Um, yeah, okay, That's that, that was just fully charged, so I am actually going to put a battery in... Um, Hang on a minute. I am going to put a battery in this power controller here. So let me do that. Get our large battery. That should charge up real fast. Okay, and then this heater needs to be hooked up to uh, power to be used. Um, could probably make the argument that I should move the power controller further back in the circuit. Well, you know what we'll do? You know what we'll do? We will remove this heater and we'll put it, we will attach it on the other side of the uh, power controller just to separate it from the manufacturing system that we have going outside. So what I'll do is I'll put it right here and I will just run a little bit of cable up. So like this. And hopefully this light cable will be okay for this. I think it will be. Um, yeah, uh, this might have to be programmed. Okay, it's just on. Let's see. It is producing heat. It appears. I mean, it's six degrees C in here. Oh, seven. Okay. So it is heating up. It is heating up. So what I what I will do is just leave that on. Well, actually, no. Let's first let's put more oxide down to get our atmosphere up to snuff in here, and then once we do that, then I will heat it up. Oh my gosh, my mouse is just really not happy with me today. There we go. Put that away. Mining belt out. Uh, tablet in one hand. And I need to switch this with this. So I can see. Okay. Oh, it is. It's okay. It's getting a little warmer in here. Um, I'll move the oxide back to my mining belt if I have to, but I don't think I will have to. See if we can get up to like 80 kPa. That should be, I think, enough. And then... <laughs> the particle effects are so cool. I love that they took the time to uh, put those in the game. Because it, it's just, it's cool to watch. You know, for someone that like studied fluid mechanics a lot, it's really fun to watch. Uh, all right, we're 81.5 kilopascals. I'm gonna power this heater on, and see. So that is gonna raise the temperature in here gradually, and I think that will be enough mm, for us to have heat in here. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that will be enough. I probably am gonna have to put up another solar panel. Maybe I can set up two station batteries. That would probably be good. Um, but let's see. Okay. All right. So here's what I'm gonna do. We've we've done a lot of improvements in the past, um, however many minutes it's been. Uh, I'm gonna let this heater run for a while and, and get to like a steady state, and then we're gonna come back and see what all we have accomplished today. 
Okay, everybody, so I'm back with an update now. Uh, we are in our base. I'm going to start calling this our house because we're about to have more than one building. Uh, I ran the wall heater for a little bit. I did turn it off eventually. The temperature in here is about 13 degrees Celsius, um, which is like a pretty livable temperature. Uh, and you, as you can see, the atmosphere, it's 90% oxygen, 10% nitrogen, and there's some CO2 because I did take my helmet off and have been breathing it. Um, so what we have accomplished in this video, let's go over it. So we have an airlock now, and that gives us a nice controlled atmosphere in our little house here. Um, so we also added this wall heater, this area power controller. Uh, we got a station battery going. A furnace that blew up for a reason that uh, I'm not fully aware of, but I'll fix in the next video, probably. Um, and we are, I, we're in a really good spot. We've got all of our essentials taken care of, except for one thing, and that one thing is food. It is almost time for us to start the tomato soup factory. So, in the next video, what we're going to do, I've already made the hydroponics trays here. We are going to construct a separate building as the greenhouse, but it's going to be connected in some way, hopefully, to this building. Um, because with the greenhouses, they need a pure CO2 atmosphere uh, for the plants to grow. So we're actually going to need some kind of intelligent like gas management system, probably an advanced airlock of some kind. Uh, and then we also need to keep the temperature at acceptable levels, which this little wall heater experiment has been good for, for showing me that. Uh, and I can actually see that as the sun is coming up and we're getting a little bit of sunlight in here, the temperature is going up, which is nice. Uh, it's 14 degrees C. That's very nice. Um, so yeah, hopefully in the next video we can get a greenhouse together. Uh, I'm definitely going to need a lot of tips for that one because, uh, you know, it sounds pretty complicated, uh, but I'm confident that we can accomplish it. We've got a good little thing going here, uh, and I am looking forward to beginning our tomato soup production. Uh, but as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I will keep this series going for as long as I'm still enjoying it, which seems like it's going to be a long time. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.